talk to us about you being a three-level scoring threat and how you're able to still get to your spots. I think that just comes with the part of me being a very poised person. I know my game. Like, my game, like, it's not going to be all fast, all shifty. It's very, very vanilla. It's very, <laughs> fundamental. Fundamental. It's very like fundamental, it. vanilla, you know. I'm going to try to get to the screen. You're going to still be right there. Be right there, I'm going to pull up. If you're shorter than me, I'm taking one dribble pull up. Yeah. If kind of taller than me, I might go to the room. Mm -hmm. I know things are going to be thrown at me just to stop me. Yeah. Um, but just staying poised throughout it all. Wow, you are so wise. So <laughs> young and so wise, Madison, <laughs> truly. <laughs>Welcome back to Sometimes I Hoop. Today, we've got a rookie hooper who made some noise all season long joining us on the pod today. Quick humble brag, McDonald's All-American, Big 12 Tournament MOP, Big 12 Freshman of the Year, and Co-Play of the Year. None other than Texas superstar point guard, Madison Booker. Thanks for hopping on the pod. Uh, thank you for having me. Oh no, thank you. It is my <laughs> pleasure. Before we jump into the tournament in March Madness, um, tell me, what is the song on repeat for you in the locker room right now as we head into the tournament? Uh, it's Run Our Test. Oh, good one. Good one. Okay. Um, such a different vibe. Our last answer was Kirk Franklin in <laughs> gospel, so a different vibe, but I like it. Okay, let's jump into the landscape here. You guys are Big 12 champs, and you're a Big 12 championship MOP, which is like absurd for a freshman to do. So <laughs> talk to me about how it was you guys had to come back against K-State, almost got you guys. What was that like then taking home the championship? I mean, it really, I mean, the whole tournament was tough. Uh, we had Kansas first round, K-State second round, and Iowa State to finish off the tournament. Um, I mean, we just had fun the entire tournament. We competed. Uh, we had fun. Uh, we got rewarded. I mean, ever since day one, since I stepped on campus, we've been working mm -hmm. uh, to win Big 12. I mean, it's, plus it's our last year there. So it felt definitely sweet just to get one before we left and went to the SEC. Yeah. No, I mean, that's crazy. that You, you guys are really going to the SEC next year. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. All the conference shifts and everything. You and Oklahoma are both going, right? We are. Oh, my God. Okay, well, how do you feel about switching conferences after your freshman year? You just kind of ran the table. Are you going to go do the same thing next year in a new conference? What What are we doing? Hey, it's a one day at a time. I mean... <laughs> I hope we do great over there. I think we will. I'm pretty sure yeah. we are. That's the right answer. Way to be humble. Okay. <laughs> so as a freshman, it's your first time experiencing Selection Sunday. Walk me through the moment you guys found out you were a number one seed because that that's pretty exciting. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of emotion. Um, you know, going in, we kind of thought, you know, since we lost to OU twice, uh during a regular season, um, we might have been two seed, mm -hmm. probably like, like a tougher way um, to get to where we're trying to get. Uh, you know, going through just seeing the uh, teams getting called out. And I think what happened was we saw like Ohio State get two. Mm -hmm. And I think we just kind of knew it was us or Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> for that last, uh, that last one seed. And uh saw Texas for the one seed and I think we all we all kinda got just quite, like happy because yeah. um I mean like we've been through a lot of like adversity this season, of course, as you know. Yeah. Our best point guard, best point guard in the nation, I think, mm -hmm. uh went down with like an ACL injury. So, um I mean just us getting rewarded kinda makes us happy. It makes us just, like still have confidence in ourselves. Talk about the tournament a little bit, the different brackets. You guys have a tough region. You have Stanford, Utah, Tennessee, NC State. Like, that's a tough corner. So how are you feeling about the region? Are there any matchups catching your eye? What are we thinking? <laughs> I, re I mean, I don't think I really look deep into it. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like if you look kind of look far into it, you know, you can kind of get out of the moment. Yeah. Uh, just to really take one game, really actually like each day at a time, because you don't yeah. know when's your last day. But, I mean, I'm kind of looking forward to playing Utah. Yeah. Actually, I like uh, their post player. I, Alyssa? I like her game. Yeah, Alyssa, like. Yeah, she's, she's tough. She, yeah, yeah she's going to give folks a run for their money. She's yeah. she's good. Yeah. 
No, I, I couldn't agree more. Peely's a she's a monster, honestly. Yes. Um, but I think it'll be an interesting matchup with you guys. Uh, oh yeah. But I think I mean your region's kind of tough. And I know in my years at Stanford, Texas and Stanford, we played each other a few times. I think I played at y'all. We played at home. We played in the Elite Eight. I want to say a few years ago. So I'm excited to see if you guys get another rematch because that's always really fun to watch. Um, but looking into some of the other corners of the bracket, I'm really interested by the one that's Iowa, LSU, that and is the UCLA. Toughest region. That, <laughs> that is the toughest, toughest region. region. I feel like there's so many different storylines. So is there a certain game that you want to see come out of that region? I mean, I definitely want to see. I think another Iowa and like LSU. Yeah, definitely want to see how that's gonna go. And I really like, there's the other one, South Carolina, and we talked about Oklahoma earlier. And oh, so yeah. I feel like Oklahoma oh, you... didn't get that Big 12 tournament like they wanted. Same thing with Indiana and the Big 10. So having that matchup, I feel like could be really interesting as well. Yeah, I think people kind of forget OU. OU is a great team. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we lost to them twice, so we know how good of a team they are. Um, I think beginning of the season, they kind of started out a little slow. And in conference, they picked it up a lot. Yeah. And they really... They're really a good team, and that like they play South Carolina, they don't get South Carolina a run for their money. They might not have the biggest posts, but they're, yeah. like they're like a whole guard, but they run the court very well. Yeah, no, you're completely right. I feel like they do fall under the radar, similar to kind of the Big Twelve as, as a whole. Honestly, I feel like you hear a lot about Pac-12, SEC, ACC, Big Ten, but Big Twelve been under the radar. But you guys have seven teams in the tournament this year, yes. so do you feel like? You know, you guys are going to gain some more respect for the conference, even though you're leaving this year. Do you feel like the Big 12 deserves more respect in terms of the talent that they have? I think it does, honestly. Like, the teams that's in the tournament, they're very good. I mean, you got West Virginia, a good defensive team that might yeah. play like Iowa, mm -hmm. which I think that's another going to be a, another great matchup. Just their defense with Iowa's offense, I think that's one to look out for. Um, K-State. Mm -hmm. K-State is, is they're really, tough. Is they're really tough. good. Yeah, They're, I like the way they play. Their big is unstoppable. Seriously, Lee is incredible, mm -hmm. and uh, their point guard, uh, we, well, we call her Sunny D. <laughs> Sundell, she's um, she's a she's a great guard, very smart. Yeah. Iowa State, they got they're gonna, they, they're they're gonna good. be good. They're, they're gonna be good, good in the Big Twelve. about the tournament i want to get into the madness a little bit and these next questions are brought to you by our lovely sponsor wendy's so have there been any teams this year that have made you kind of do a double take and been like they could really make some noise heading into the postseason because i know for me i've seen some teams that haven't gotten as much love in the beginning and then all of a sudden two two seeds three seeds in this tournament right now i feel like a team that actually like might do a great run is yeah. ohio state even Ooh. though they're a two seed yeah. Like I feel like people know they're good, but they don't they don't know how good they are. Yeah. Like I feel like they're very good, very underrated, and kind of very quiet. Like they're not always like on the headlines. Yeah. But I, I feel agree. like they're gonna do good in the tournament. I see it too. Cause they they like they've had a lot of ups and downs. And so yeah. I feel like if they can peak at the right time, they'll be good. And I feel like another one for me, speaking from a Pac-12 bias, is Oregon State is tough. Like yes. they came out of nowhere this season. Yeah, that that surprised me a lot actually yeah. this year. I'm I'm excited to see them. And then more on a personal on an individual side, what players have really impressed you this season that you feel like are really gonna make some noise in the tournament? I feel like my whole freshman class. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> my whole freshman class is gonna do well in the tournament. Yeah. I mean, y'all been hooping all season. Like half <laughs> like half your freshman class got their respective conference tournaments MOPs, which is kind of crazy. Like, how was that? How was that happening? But I think it's just so exciting for not only your class, but just showing the talent that we have coming out of yeah. high school is huge. Um, but you had your first season on your belt playing in the Big Twelve, and I feel like sometimes these neutral sites, especially at like the Big Twelve tournament, now moving into March Madness, they don't always feel neutral the way that fans travel. So oh, yeah. in your experience, what do you feel like is the craziest fan base? Iowa State. Oh, East, oh, that was quick. Iowa State. That was quick. Okay, why Iowa State? They just roll in deep. I mean, yeah. we was in Kansas, like Kansas City for Big 12 and we played them the last game. I think everybody, 
Everybody yeah. named my mom's there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I did, yeah. I would not have guessed Iowa State. Their fans ride hard for them. Wow. K State too. Yeah. Okay. Those I like two that. right there. Yeah, that's a. If you win like in their home place. Oh, it gets nasty. It, <laughs> I can, it gets okay. crazy. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep. I got you. And then we talked a little bit about you know the Big Twelve kind of getting slept on, and I feel like with that, a lot of just like individual superstars don't get as much pub as we see in other conferences. And so you guys have a lot of talented players. Who has been the toughest guard, like the player that you guys had to circle on your scouting report every time you saw them? So I will give definitely credit to West Virginia guard JJ Quibley. Really? Okay. She's. I, like it. I don't think she gives enough like credit. Okay. Like for her defense, she won defensive player of yeah. our conference this year. Yeah. But her offense is. I mean, she probably. I think she scored like thirty like three times in our conference. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's like that then. Thirty yes. balls. Yeah, you're like that. Yeah. Um. She's good. She's okay. good. We we played them once, but she was probably uh very hard to deal with. With the tournament being here, I want to give some players their flowers, like we've been doing a little bit heading to madness. And so I want you to give me a quick scouting report without giving away the Texas secret so that Vic doesn't get upset with you. <laughs> give me a quick scout of Peyton Volhurst on Oklahoma, who I feel like has really come into her own. Yes. Oh, she's good. Yeah, she she's good. She's good. Shoot. Get her off the three-point line. Yeah. Get her off the three-point line. <laughs> Don't let her face cut you, but, you know, also get her off the three-point line. She's yeah. very good. I mean, the same time we play, like, OU, mm -hmm. we were up, and she comes down. Like, she comes out, what, second or third quarter. She had two step-back threes on us. I said, there's no way. Uh-oh. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way. Nah, she's good. Keep her off the three-point line. I would say uh. she gets hot very easily. Yeah, I hate I hate when you start a quarter like that, you know? And then they just they just get off and you're like, time out, please yeah. slow your roll. I don't need this right now. <laughs> I don't. Um, and then we, you mentioned her earlier, but Lee at Kansas State, she is so good. Like her footwork at her size, it's insane. Good. Yeah. So tell me about her. Man, push her off the block. <laughs> Try your hardest. Push her off the block. Don't let her get nothing easy. Don't let her get no easy layup. Push yeah. her off the block. Try. So, Try your best. <laughs> so we got run off the three-point line and one push her off the block. Just push get, her off the block. Just get them out their spots, basically. Get them, get them away from their spots. So let's jump it back into your basketball roots for a minute. You're from Mississippi. Your dad is 6'10", so I feel like that already helps. <laughs> but who first put the ball in your hands? How did you get into basketball? Uh, my dad. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say he came to my room one day and put a little plastic goal in my room, and I just started hooping ever since then. Meant to be. <laughs> uh, so was he your coach growing up? Uh, a little bit. I didn't like him being my coach. Oh, I get that. Okay, yeah. You need you need those boundaries. Because yeah, I don't need to see him all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see it. Growing up, do you feel like there was a certain player that you watched and kind of modeled your game after? So, in my early years, I was a Boston Celtics fan. So, I watched. Ooh, me too. Roger Rondo. Uh huh. I used to wear the headband like him. I used to want to be a point guard like him. Love it. Love it. Uh, point guard, you know, I kind of got too tall, so I had to move to the wing. So, mm -hmm. I wasn't a point guard. But um, I was just, I mean, like, I love this game. I had posters in, like, in my room of him growing up. And then kind of switched to, so I'm bigger. So I kind of went to a little more of Carmelo, mm -hmm. Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. I used to watch highlights of them all the time. Mm, the those are good. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And I mean, you're still playing point guard now. So maybe we can throw the headband yeah. back on for a little throwback. <laughs> you know, keep it going. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe. I would love to see it. But talking about your recruiting, what made you want to choose Texas? What was it about Texas that was like, yeah, that's for me? So, I mean, I always tell people I go back to, like, Coach Schaefer, he recruited me since I was in eighth grade. And um, I kind of fall back on what he did in Mississippi State. Like, mm -hmm. I knew he knew how to win. He did it before. He definitely had a player like me before and, like, Victoria Vimeo's in Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. um, 
Then I kind of went back to the relationship. I knew him for years. Like we had, a, so we had a great relationship all them years, and so I trusted him that he could help me be the best player I can be. I love that. I mean, I feel like seeing Vic's journey from Mississippi State to Texas is so cool. Cause like when they beat UConn in the final four a few years ago with Morgan and Victoria and all that, that was like a shift in women's basketball. It was of like it's not one team anymore. And so tell me what it's like playing for a coach like him. Because I've been on the other side and he is intense. And he I'm is. it's a lot. So like, what is it like playing for somebody who's that passionate and that hyped up and all these different things? I mean, every day he <laughs> he's very intense. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's practice is our practice are very intense. I think people don't understand that. I, I think like we're probably I feel like Cause like I talk to like other players, of course, yeah, and they're like, yeah, practice is kind of slight today. I'm like, dang, huh? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. dang, I wish I was you, yeah, you know. Um, it's always our practice are always defense, really, mm -hmm. defense, 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 and you know, I'm not gonna say I just hate defense. You know? <laughs> I love like, offense a little too much. <laughs> but, you're like, um, so can we get a balance? <laughs> like, let's get some shots up. It's a balance here and there, but yeah. um. I mean, I also kind of came to Texas mm -hmm. for him, but also because I wanted to, like, get better on defense. So, you know, it's kind of tense on that end. But, I mean, just learning the game um, since I've been here, I think I've grown a lot on that end. Yeah. Um, a very intense coach. He's very passionate about the game. I love it. He loves the game. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, he's – He's a one-of-a-kind guy, I can say that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so back to you and your style of play. You came into college a small forward, as we talked about, you know, being a bigger guard. But now you're playing strictly PG for the most part. So what has that shift been like for you? I mean, it, it seems like it's gone well. Is it as seamless? <laughs> is it as seamless as the transition as you make it seem to be? Or what was that like? Uh, it was hard. <laughs> I would say, I would say just really just a, a PG role is hard in general. Like you have the ball in your hands most of the mm -hmm. game. You're making decisions all yeah. the time. Yeah. You're handling the ball all the time. You're handling pressure. You're breaking presses, like you're doing a lot of things. Yeah. And you still gotta run a team. Yes. And <laughs> um shoot, that was probably the hardest thing. Yeah. And just also like the vision I had as a wing player. Because I mean, I was still like a pass first type of wing player, but also I would score when I, you know, mm -hmm. had my shots to take. But then moving to a point guard still pass first mentality. Like the court just changes. Like the how you view the court, how you make reads, it all changes. And so, I mean, really, you know, it was a struggle. Really, first half of the conference, it was a struggle. Yeah. Turning the ball over, you know, just making bad reads, not seeing the read quick enough. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'll get yelled at. But I mean, I took it as a learning moment. And like after every game, I'm going to the film. Like seeing what I did wrong, what I can do better just to help me out. Yeah. And I mean, my number one thing when I asked Coach what I do what do I need to do to be better for my team as a point guard? And he mm -hmm. said, I need you to have limit on like basically your your turnovers. Yeah. And so that's been the main thing I've been working on. And I can say our last game I had zero turnovers, so <laughs> Love he was very that. he was very proud about that, and oh. I was proud about that too. Oh, that's big. <laughs> that's big. Yes. So I mean, I would say like it was probably the hardest transition, but um, I mean, my teammates had confidence. They they had a lot of a lot of confidence in me. I didn't even yeah. have that. My uh, coaching staff did too, mm -hmm. and I think me just not really just getting very like overwhelmed at it, but just taking it all in, just taking one day at a time. And also wanted to grow in that aspect. Mm -hmm. I think it helped me become the player I am today. Well, I mean, I feel like we've we've from the outside been able to see that growth that you've had. Like <laughs> it's hard to be a point guard in general is hard, but like freshman year point guard transitioning from being a wing to a point guard, it's a lot going on. And I think what you said about the vision from a wing to a point guard, and also just like you have to take yourself out of just playing one position. Yes. When you're the point guard, not only 
I think the biggest thing for me <laughs> is like, oh my gosh, I, I'm the one who has to call the place. Like I'm up here dribbling, thinking in my head and I'm like- A play, you can't think of one quick enough. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody's looking at you and I'm like, horns, uh, I don't know. And it's so stressful up there and they have to be loud and it's like understanding you know, what actions your teammates like to play off of, you know? That Shaylee too. may not like the same thing as Shay, or Aaliyah may like it on a different block than Deanna. Like, there's a lot of different things going on. You know what? I go to this, just yeah. that one right there. But I feel like you guys have so many different pieces that you talked about. But losing a big one in Rory back in December, talk to me about what that, because I feel like seeing her still on the screen, seeing her through social media, she still seems so engaged. And so what is it like to have somebody who is that, crucial to the team, still be so engaged on the sideline, becoming another coach. I see her with her whiteboard during every game. She's locked in. What has that been like for you to be able to learn from her? I mean, yeah, she's been in my ear. Uh, just helped me also with the role, this, mm -hmm. this PG role. Um, I mean, great advice. She sees the court tremendously well. Uh, I think also, like, that's also how I've kind of grown to being a better point guard mm -hmm. not the best but a little better we're on our not way. like her you're doing great <laughs> <laughs> um you know she just you know she's always in practice she's talking she's uh telling us you know we have this new thing where you get three stops in a row it's a kill mm -hmm. you know we try to get seven kills and so she kind of came up with that theory just to help us be more basically like defensively like engaged on defense yeah so um I mean, she's always talking. She's always there. She's always bringing energy. She's always hyping us up. You know, she's basically like coach second voice. Mm -hmm. You know, when when we have a question, we go to her. She's like the second person we'll go to. Yeah. Is Coach Jeffrey and her. She, I mean, she's basically him. Yeah. Just in a smaller person, <laughs> smaller voice. But yeah, she's definitely engaged. Um, happy just to have her. Just like just basically a smile on her face. You know, being both big guards as we are, what do you feel like are some of the pros and cons that you see from being a big guard? I feel like it's definitely more pros than cons, but sometimes when I have like somebody tiny picking me up full court, oh my gosh, back up. That yes. is so annoying. Why yes. are you doing that? So talk to me. What are the pros and cons? Con is just little guards picking me up. Yeah. First game, being point guard, play Baylor. Mm -hmm. Jada, the Oof. point guard. Like she's a she's tough. Five six, I think. Yeah. Picked me up full court, and I was like, "There's no way. There's, there's no way. <laughs> Somebody there's come no get way. the ball. That's please, what I would be thinking. Please, please, <laughs> please come get the ball." Um, I was saying uh, pros are, you know, I can, I can just like basically like shoot over people. I'm six yeah, one. Yeah, mismatches I, I can everywhere. Shoot everywhere, you know, you're like a bigger person guarding me. You know, you're a four maybe. Oh, this is the matchup I want right here. Yeah. Um, if you're a little guard, I'm going to post you up. Mm -hmm. um, another con? I don't think there's... I feel like that's the only one. It's really... Yeah, it's only really <laughs> one, for real. And it's a... Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like there's so many pros with the mismatches or just being able to run different reads. No matter what your matchup is, there's an advantage that you have. Yes. But I agree. I had Dana Evans picking me up this year. Ma'am, I don't need this extra stress in my life. Like, I yeah, really don't. Yeah, that is stress. Like, and people want to run away as soon as they see you with that. And it's like, why are you being selfish? You see me. I thought we were cool. Like, what is this about? So that's And they be, the, they be the quickest guards that be under your knee, knees. Yes. Just some at the ball. Ugh. We talked about you kind of having this, like, finesse on offense, right? Fundamental rather than vanilla. <laughs> but when did you learn or kind of gain that ability to slow the game down and let it come to you? Because I think a lot of times people get so sped up, especially as a freshman playing in a new league. Yeah. Big 12 is great defensively. How are you able to, you know, slow your game down, not get rushed, say so, just like like we talked about, you being so wise, so mature. Where, where does that come from? I mean, honestly, it's my personality. Like, mm. I'm really just a neutral person. Like, I really don't get too high about things, get too low about things. You know, people say I'm awkward uh, when, like, we, like basically, like, getting rewards. But it's just uh -huh. like, thank you for the award. But it's like, next thing on. <laughs> like, Thanks. okay, thank you. <laughs> yes. And it's like, okay. But, um, I mean, it's just kind of been to me since I was young. Okay. Just, being a very poised, chill person, and I kind of, and I kind of like put that to my game. 
I got it's it. It's been okay. a chill. Just relax. We we got this. But it's our first postseason. You're heading into March Madness, number one seed. What's the mindset or of both you, but also the locker room heading into the tournament? Because it seems like you guys are peaking at the right time. You're just coming off the Big 12 tournament win. So what is it, you know, what's the mindset? What are the vibes heading into first weekend of March Madness right now? Well, I mean, we know that we have Texas cross our test. We're going to the SEC. We just won mm -hmm. Big 12. We are now one seed now. We know it's a lot of pressure. You know, not everybody want to beat you. You're one seed. People should, we know that people think that we shouldn't be at one seed. So that's in, that's in our minds. Like, we have to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. But I just think the, what we're thinking about is we have to be hot. Like, in a Big 12 tournament, we were hot. And I think we just stay hot, taking one day at a time and just stay poised. Like me. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll be just fine. <laughs> like me. Like, like me. me. Just, oh my I God. Am, yes, I am the most poisoned on my team. I like think. me? I love that. I love that. Because you're talking about, you know, you got Leah getting hyped up, all these different people, you're level headed. And that's what every team needs is that person. Wow, I'm weak. Okay, so <laughs> back into it. Before we get into our vibe check, of which is going to be rapid fire answers, which I feel like you're going to be great at, is I just want to give you some flowers. We talked about a lot of other players, but I personally have been very impressed with you this year. And I was a fan seeing you on all your highlights in high school and all these different <laughs> things. But like once you get to college to show that you can still be doing that, I feel like a lot of freshmen this year are getting a lot of hype on social media. And you've kind of been flying under the radar. But I've been, I've been <laughs> witnessing it. Me and my friends, we've been talking about it. Your three-level score, stepping into playing a point guard in such a tough conference and doing it with the grace that you have been and just seeing your continued growth is very exciting. So I just wanted to tell you that as I have my time to talk to you right now. And I know you're horrible at taking compliments, so just, Thank just smile. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So getting into our vibe check to rapid fire answers, you're gonna do great. Some people aren't so great, but I have a belief in you. So I think we do well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the drill you never want to see on the practice plan? Uh, we have this drill called defense on the floor for three minutes. Ooh, Sh straight defense on the floor for three minutes. Hate yeah. It. No. Okay. Next one: game winning shot or game winning block? I'm game winning shot for sure. Okay. And one or three pointer. And one. Yeah. Group TikTok, solo TikTok? Group. Biggest trash talker? It could be on your team or anybody that you ever played. A little more. Oh, okay. Like it. Who's the biggest flopper? That's actually hard. Biggest Have flopper. I, I've stumped you for the first time today. Hold up. <laughs> I go like, we have one on our team. I'll say Shaylin Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, really? Dang. Okay, okay. Um, what's your biggest basketball ick? People who wear short socks, like angle socks with their basketball shoes, bro. Get some longer socks. Oh, wow. Yeah, calling out everybody who wears short socks. All right. Um, someone to play. Who would you want to be your two-on-two -two teammate, but you can't pick one of your current Texas teammates? Me, Hannah Hidalgo. Me, oh, Hidalgo. my gosh. I love that. Okay. Give me your best impersonation of Coach Vic Schaefer. That ain't it. That ain't it. The way you got a Southern twang. Is <laughs> out of nowhere. It's insane. But I like it. Okay. Madison, you have been such a pleasure to have on today. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Stay tuned for another episode of Sometimes I Hoop as the tournament unfolds. <laughs>